Hello traders, this is Rich from TradeSite. Right now we're going to do the uh, fifth installment of our uh, how-to series on how to use eSignal line drawing tools. This video will demonstrate how to utilize line drawing tools and their new unique features for eSignal version 11. What we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the uh, at kind of the basics for now. We're going to take a look at uh, the default, what the the system defaults to. We're going to look at the uh, the arrow tool, also the price ruler, how to use the ray, and also to uh, reorganize it or re or uh, relocate it on a chart. And we're also going to take a look at the horizontal line and the vertical time cuts that could be applied to your charts to uh, help you uh, keep your charts clean, but also show you the uh, the information that you need to make your trading clearer and more profitable. So let's take a look at a chart now. All right. So now what we have here is we've got a we've got a, a snapshot of Apple in the uh, in the weekly time frame. What we want to do is we want to explore what different uh, price uh, tools could be available to us for drawing on the chart. So what we're going to do is we're going to take my mouse and go up here to this little pencil. Once you click on the pencil, you're going to get a whole sub menu that pops down in this ribbon. What we want to focus on here first is this uh, this first first selected area. This is where we're going to find our our basic trend lines. So first, let's take a look at the default. If I click on this little this little triangle here, it's going to give me some selections to make. So right now, it's at the default. So we're going to use that. So what I'm going to do now is now that I've clicked on that, you can see that I've got this little this little uh, crosshair with the uh, with the line under it. So what I can do now is I can I can easily draw a trend line here. So I'm just going to anchor this at this point here. I'm going to click it once and I'm going to drag while I'm still left clicking to where I want this to stop. I'm going to release the left click. You can see that the line's still moving. And as soon as I have it exactly where I want it, click it one more time and that will lock it in place. And you see the two little the two little arrows or the two little uh squares that popped up on either side. That's going to show me that the line is active now. If I click on the chart again, those little, little, little bubbles will disappear from either side of the line and the line will now be locked in place there. One of the other selections that I can use instead of the default would be an arrow. I'm going to hit arrow for now and you can see I've got my cursor again here with the uh, active line under it and now I can click on this point and I can start drawing an arrow I can use this as well as soon as I have it where I want it I release it click it now I've got the two the two bubbles on either end as soon as I click the chart again the lock in place it's another uh, another option here which uh, I like to use a lot which is the ray it's a little bit different in that it makes kind of a pivot, so I can just click it once, let's say on this point. And as soon as I do that, you can see how the line now, even though the cursor is in the middle of the chart, the line extends all the way to the edge of the chart. This is very useful, I find, when trying to project forward if you see a trend line that you want to keep plotting in the future that you hope price will use in the future. But for now, I'm just going to angle this back up here, click on it again, and then leave it there. There's one more feature that we haven't looked at yet, which is a little bit different. This one's the price ruler. This actually will give you a little bit more information. Let's say we want to take a look at, uh, maybe let's take a look down here at this swing low, maybe up to this swing high here. And let's, let's take a look at this. And this will give us some extra information. So I'm going to, going to click on that. And then I'm going to extend the price ruler up to that high. And you see what we do is we get we get some extra information when we do that. It's going to give me a price which is uh which is the amount of net difference between the two points. It's going to count the bars where it's 60 something bars and it's also going to give me a slope which is 6.07, the slope of the line. So this will this will give you some additional information and can be very helpful when you're trying to uh project into the future what it might take for a price to reach a certain objective, how many bars it might take 
and how 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 long you might uh, expect it to take to get to that price, and also if the angle of ascent is is too st is either too steep or or too too low and running out of uh, running out of energy. So these are all useful in and of themselves. But the real advantage of e single e 11 here is that these lines, once they're locked on the chart, are very easy to manipulate and to use in different ways. So I'll, uh, I'll show you how to do that. All right, now one other thing I want to show you is that uh, there's also an eraser feature, which is right here. This is the eraser. Once I activate that, you can see I've got the eraser now for the cursor. I can just wave that over a particular item. Right now you see that the uh, price ruler is highlighted. Now if I click on that, it'll remove it from the chart. Let's say I want to remove this arrow as well. I can highlight the, the line, but I'm, right now I'm just going to highlight the arrow. So we've got a chart with a, with a, with a few notations on them and you want to start cleaning up the chart if those notations are no longer valid and you want to make some new ones the eraser is a quick way to do it because it allows you to do it in a fairly uh, uh, quick manner to do m more than one thing now one of the great things about e signal is being able to manipulate these different lines so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to wave my cursor until I get the little the little hand in the finger once I do that if I, cl if I left click on that trend line you can see I've got my bubbles back. Now once I have my bubbles back, I can now manipulate the line. This one was the price ray, which is always anchored at one side and then pivots off of that. So if I go up here and drag on this bubble, now I can change where this ray resides. You can see if I just drop it back down here, line, you can see how this can be used as a support area this prior breakout so this can this can be very helpful and if you if I want to move this and say well I think I want to see what's going to happen if we uh, if we take it down here I can move that I can go back to my bubble and I can readjust it and create this important level of support right here at 351 for Apple now the same thing can be done for the uh, individual lines as well I can uh, I can click and reactivate this and I can move this and since this is not a ray this is just a segment I can extend it or I can even even transpose it and use it this way and then if you don't like where it is or if that particular area in the charts not useful you can take the whole thing and move it this way and that can be relocated on your charts so just because you have a, a trend line on the chart doesn't mean you necessarily have to take it off if you want to make a readjustment. They're easy to change and can be manipulated in almost almost any way you need. So let's move this up. Let's move this little segment one more time. This is actually what I have on, on my chart. What I've done is I've just extended it this way. And uh, there's other features here that you can do as well. This was this is what the uh, trend line looked before we went into the uh, most recent earnings report. What I did on my chart was I actually went to the uh, edit area, so I just right I just right click and I'm hovering over the line itself. I can hit edit, and then I'm gonna get an edit window that pops up here. And now this is the this is just the way it is defaulted to, but you can go in and you can change it. What I did was I changed the style from the, the solid lines to the dash lines I made it double wide and I changed it to yellow just to give a little a little importance and when I do this and I close it you can see how the chart changed and I just really wanted to have that have that trend line on my chart because I thought that was going to be very important so I put that on and left and left that one on my chart as is and that's still there now so this last little breakout was fairly important because it was the first time we pivoted positively on earnings after all these other misses so one of that on the chart and you can see how it really stands out now that I've that I've changed it. And if you have more than one line on a chart, oftentimes it is very helpful to to code them so you can see them a little bit a little bit better. Now another type of uh of trend line we can use is not not in this first selection here, it would be in the second selection. This would just be a straight horizontal trend line. If I click on that, 
and then I, I select, let's say I want to want to target this swing low. It's very important support here going forward. All I have to do is click on that line. And if I click on that line, it's going gonna, it's gonna to give me a horizontal line that spans the entire chart. So I can quickly put a support line there. And I can do likewise here going forward. I can target this high of the chart and have a high watermark there as well. This is also good when you're... Uh, identifying little ranges intraday because you can quickly add them to the chart. The other thing you can do is if you're going forward and you'd like to, like to denote in the future something as well, you can say, well, I just want to make sure that when I'm three candles away here, uh, I'm aware of where we are here for the next earnings report. So that's going to be a vertical line here. You can use these as well. If, you, uh, if you're trading options and you want to make sure that you're aware of when you're into the last two weeks, of the cycle if you're working in a daily chart sometimes uh, if you want to avoid that 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 accelerated time decay you can make sure that you uh, have that marked off on your on your chart so you are aware of what the price action is leading into that uh, that key event so these are these are all very useful things to use and uh, and should be used and can always be added and deleted and the other thing is like we talked about you can always move these wherever you need them by grabbing them and dragging them just to be able to quickly change your studies on the fly and to uh, make sure that your tech, te technical analysis is you know representing what's what's happening right now and that you're always uh, able to manipulate these on the fly and you don't get bogged down tweaking your charts when you should be watching things and trading which is our job anyway right all right folks well that's going to be it for this installment i hope you uh, learned something if you have any questions uh, please feel free. You can always email it at, at rderek at tradesite.com. Uh, as always, thanks for listening and hope to see you again for the next installment.